Our scripture this morning will come from John 4, starting at the 20, at the 24th verse. That's John chapter 4, starting at the 21st verse. Say amen when you have it. Amen. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshiper will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. I have just read John the fourth chapter, the 21st through the 24th verse. God's word is alive and it is holy things we can say about God, but all of that can be wrapped up in the word wonderful. He is good to us when we're not good to our own selves. He is wonderful. He loves us when we don't even love our own self. He is wonderful. Others would not have created us, but God created you individually with you on his mind. And tell people all the time, you don't need to be someone else. You are beautiful just as you are because God made you the way he made you. He's wonderful. Whenever you start feeling intimidated or feeling not good enough, think about what he did and how much time he took to craft you and then declare that you are made in his likeness and in his image. And then if that's not good enough, he declares that even the hairs on your head are numbered by him. He is wonderful. And then morning by morning, he gives us mercy and grace and wakes us up. No matter what we did the night before, he gives us some new mercies throughout the day. He is I wish I had a witness in here that knows that God is, God was, God shall be truly wonderful, 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 wonderful. And if you don't wake up next to nobody that tells you you're wonderful, you go to sleep with him and he wakes you up every morning to let you know he is wonderful. Thank you, Music Ministry, for the reminder of how wonderful our God really is in our life. There is a word today, the first Sunday, 2020. If you don't mind, I want you to help me. A new thing in an old place. Help me with this. A new thing in an old place. 2020 is upon us. And sometimes folks are always looking for some new things and new places. But sometimes you need to go back to where you once were. And rediscover who God is. John 4 and 21. You can keep your seats. Just listen to where it says, woman, as uh, she replied, Jesus replied to the woman, believe me, a time is coming and is already here. Uh, where well, your fathers neither will worship in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. 22, uh, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. 23, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. 24, God is a spirit. And his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. A new thing in an old place. Isn't it amazing to know that even every life experience, that is every, every life experience has a plan. God has planned everything we go through. And he has planned it in advance of us going through it. 
whether you know it or not, you have been planned and purposed by God. It's no mistake today that you're sitting where you're sitting, next to who you're sitting with, listening to what you're listening to. God has orchestrated all things. And the good news is that he's done it for your benefit. And every journey, every journey that is worth traveling but must often uh, take you where you don't necessarily want to go, where you didn't plan to go, uh, where you didn't see yourself going. Uh, can anybody testify I didn't appreciate the process when I was going through it, but I must confess, having been through it, I'm better for it. Yeah. The text, the text takes us on a journey that highlights this same and very important fact that although we know it, elders, sometimes we need to be reminded of it. I know I'm saved. I know I love God. And I know God loves me. But every now and then I need to be reminded about his love toward me. And, and I don't care how many times you've been told that someone loves you. It's good to hear it every now and then. It's more important to feel it every now and then. Please understand that Jesus specializes in ministry opportunities in every interaction of our lives. Brother Powell, it's no mistake and no happenstance that God connects his people. Some of us are praying folk away from us, but you need to pray God's will in your life. Because the folks that you may pray away from you may be the very people to save you. Ah, there's no mistake in God. This particular journey in scripture is one that uh, really, really, uh, really highlights the importance, the significance of time and place. Somebody say time. time. Somebody say place. place. Just, just consider Jesus taking an out of the way journey to a distant land away, way, way from where he needed to be. Uh, he took and told the disciples, yeah, we're going to, to Galilee, but we're going to go through Samaria. We're going to go some 65 to 70 miles out of the way. We're going to add that to the trip. For him and for his disciples, what did that mean? That meant more heat in the sun. It meant more traveling time. It meant more gas in the car. It, it meant that they had to uh, have more uh, resources in case the engines, engines broke down. They, they had to have more stuff to go where Jesus wanted them to go the way he wanted them to go. He added the distance, also increasing another two to three days on their journey. The most direct route would have taken them there a little faster, but he had to go through Samaria. Isn't it good to know that Jesus is willing to go out of his way for you? Oh, somebody going to get this after a while. Uh, have you ever found yourself in an out-of-the-way situation? Ah, one sister testified to me last week that she came all the way to church to only experience some anger that she had never felt in church before. But guess what? Sometimes you need to be in an out-of-the-way situation in order to appreciate what God has already done for you. Amen. I feel like testifying in here. Some of us have been so blessed that we just take for granted that God is going to bless us. Preach, preacher. Some of us are just so, you know, America has been so blessed that sometimes America act the fool. Yeah. We say in God we trust, but we act like we love the devil. Sometimes God's got to maximize the moments in our lives to help us to get back on kilter to understand where our help really does come from. God blessed us so good, sometimes we get self-reliant and self-dependent and self-intelligent. But you don't know how the sun comes up and you don't know how it goes down. You just know it comes up and goes down. Come on, Job. You, you don't know how the worlds were created. You just know they were created. Come on, Job. You weren't there when God did all this stuff. And sometimes we get too familiar with God and the things of God. And he's got to take us some places and some situations where we become more reverent about who he is. Jesus specializes, I tell you, in out 
of the way situations. And don't think you so holy. Don't think you so blessed that God won't allow you to be in some out of the way circumstances. I've been delivered from cussing. But every now and then, I'll find myself in a cussing mood, in a, in a, in a cussing circumstance. Oh, come on in here. Y'all, y'all looking at me, looking at me like I, some of y'all been delivered from drinking, but let enough stress come before you open up your Bible to Malachi. You be, let me hear him get up out of here. Y'all, somebody mad at me already. Uh, additionally, additionally, your journey will take turns. Your journey will take twists, seemingly twists and turns that are unnecessary. But God will prove to you that even the un seemingly unnecessary cuts and turns are really what's needed for you at that time. I wish somebody in here could testify that I've been in the wilderness and that's where I needed to be, right there in that wilderness experience children of Israel didn't, should not have had to go through the wilderness, but they had to. Yes. They had old thinking and old mindsets, and you can't bring old thinking into some new situations, yes. some new circumstances. You can't put no new wine in old wine skins. I'm talk, talking to somebody here that loves wine. You, you got to, amen, be able to change, to adapt, and I know this is a challenge for everybody because human beings are creatures of habit, and we are comfortable with what we are comfortable with. But God is always changing up on us. Yes, always causing things to change so that we can grow. Be careful. You praying for more faith. <laughs> praying for more patience. Praying for more understanding. I'm not saying telling you not to pray for it, but I'm telling you that your patience, your strength, your understanding can come in some strange ways. Yes. Ah, I got teenagers uh, in 20-somethings. And my patient has grown. Amen. I'm going to use some other examples, but I'm going to move right along. And, and you know, I'm sure, uh, through your Bible study, I have some scholars in here, that the hatred, the animus between, that existed between the Jews and the Samaritans were great. It was great, great. So Jesus must have had a plan to have his beloved disciples to go through some hostile territory. Now I know some folks have been misled biblically and you are praying that God will not take you to some dangerous circumstances and situations but the prayer should not be don't take me through dangerous circumstances and situations because uh, most folk that have done anything worth anything in the Bible have had to go through some dangerous Dr. King is famous for saying that if you don't have something for which you, with which you believe is worth dying for, then you don't really have a life worth living. Ah, sometimes people get it twisted to be a Christian does not mean to be a punk. Being a Christian means that you have some strength and some backbone that is not your own. That you have some authority that has been given to you and that you can speak what is not into existence. That's why he says about faith that it, you don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. And you can say to the yonder's mountain, be moved and it will be removed. But you got to walk, talk and act like you know that it is yours. Because he says to the publicans, why pray loud and arduous prayers, you know, and all those resounding words, and they don't mean nothing. It's better to say one of two things in faith than a whole course of things, and it's just out of your tradition. Preach, preacher. The hatred between the two were, 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 were pal is palatable. And this is relevant in 2020 because there's a lot of hatred going on. Oh yeah, there's a lot of hatred going on in the world. These nations are fighting each other, and and, and we just uh, our 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 dear president has just killed someone, a major general in Iran. There's a lot of hatred, but I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about haters in the pews, haters in the choir, haters ushering on the floor, haters in the pool. I'm talking about hater raid in God's house. Be careful. Be careful.
careful now because before we lift others, we got to lift ourselves. Before we motivate others, we need to be motivated. 2020 is going to, we're going to be faced with some challenges. And it don't make sense to, to just get a bunch of uh, a dessert. You need some good, good meals so that you can be strong to deal with the winds that are about to blow. Because if, if our president gets his way, there's some strong hatred between these nations. So much so that uh, if, if you read the historic record, you will find that many of the Jews would go out of the way in order to get to Galilee. The, the goal was not to go through, and, and the road to Samaria was a dangerous road. It was fraught with all types of lions and tigers and bears. I want you to know if y'all was awake, that's all. I just was trying to figure that. But, but, but God can make friends out of enemies. I tell everybody, I've been 15 years in Staten Island, and a large part of my job in Staten Island has really been a bridge builder. Because people are so close in proximity, people are so close in relationship. We are islands within islands that sometimes we isolate ourselves because people are related in so many multiple ways. I know you even though I don't. You were at Pookie's birthday party. I, you know how it is. We, we, we sort of know each other, and even if we don't, and then you get a rumor and sometimes it's just all convoluted so sometimes somebody simply just needs to build a bridge yeah, yeah. all of us want the same thing all of us want to get along all of us want quality of life and sometimes we allow little things you know that's what the enemy does don't you he don't put no big stuff he'll whisper just a little something in your ear and have you acting uh -huh. With just little whispers. Because the enemy does not have power over you. He only has power to try to influence yes. your thinking. His job is to get into your mind. Mess with your mind. Uh, the person you least expect God can use to save you. The folk that you think don't like you really aren't even thinking about you. <laughs> Most of the time their mind's on something far in the distance. They stand at you, they really stand at tomorrow. Yes. You just happen to be in the way of tomorrow. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Ah. In addition to add injury to insult, Jesus uh, having uh, to, to have been in Judea speaks to the, the, the Nicodemus right before this particular part in the pericope. And he announces ahead of time to his disciples. Look what he says. He says, uh, I have to. There must be. I've got, there was an imperative word that he spoke. Uh huh. The work has to be done. Sometimes we need to comprehend that God does not operate solely based on our preferences. He calls, draws, and pushes us to our purpose. I need God. There is someone that needs you. And although you don't want to get up, I'm not going to let you sleep. <laughs> although you want to go left, I'm going to make you go right. Uh, although you already paid your dues, I'm going to make you dig deeper. There is a imperative to your purpose. You must go. And teaching uh, freshman students at most of these universities, it is a laughable reality for me when I give an assignment and they say, how many pages? <laughs> I mean, at this stage of the game, it's laughable to me because the retort is always going to be the same. As many pages as you need to do the assignment. <laughs> and they'll look at me all flustered and say, oh, does that mean five pages? <laughs> does that mean three pages? And I laugh and smile and say, as many pages as you need to accomplish this assignment. And some of us are looking at God when he speaks to us. And we turn to him and we'll say to him, you know what we say, how many pages? Because <laughs> I've been through this before. Uh, three pages suffice. And God is saying to us, as many pages as you need to get the job done. There's some articulate writers in here who can accomplish the goal in a page. 
Oh, it's gotten quiet. <laughs> and there's some, you know, more like me, who have to dig and, and research and do a little bit more and a little wordy at times. And you got to accomplish the same goal in three pages. And then there's some who are prolific <laughs> and profound. And the profundity of the addiction <laughs> requires a soliloquy. <laughs> Capture the mode, not all, and no meaning of the tenor and text of the sentiment. Right. And they got to give you some volumes. And then got to explain the volumes. We must go to Samaria. It is an imperative. I, I have to. I, I have no choice. We must, and watch this. Jesus said, we. I don't know why you're saying we when, when, when God called you, he didn't call me. We. Talking about we. I, don't, I don't sing in the choir. Why are you talking about we? My, my job ain't ushering on no floor. What are you talking about we? Well, if we're in this together when it's good. Amen. 2020 is going to require some we mentalities. You know how friends are, don't you? You got friends, and then you have friends. Oh, you can't tell everybody everything. You got friends that you call on to tell certain things. Then you have some friends that you can share everything. Well, just about everything. Some stuff we don't tell nobody but the Lord. <laughs> It's interesting that, that Jesus said, we got to go to Samaria. The disciples didn't know the plan. The, the woman that he met there didn't know the plan. But Jesus knew the plan. Rest to be assured that he has a plan for you in 2020. And you might not even understand it. But if God's been good to you, you should at least trust him enough to be good to you in 2020. Either you're going to go easy. Come on, Tina Turner, or you're going to go hard. One way or another, you're going to go through it. And for my millennials, Tina used to sing a song. Big wheels keep on turning. Proud Mary keep on. Oh, y'all done got so holy. Y'all don't. Oh, thank you, Elder. Rolling. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it is easy. Point, point one, point point. No matter the task, no, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, he's got it all under control. Tell somebody he's got it under control. You, you might not understand it. You might not like it. You might not feel it. You might not want it. You might not have planned for it, welcomed it. But God has it. So be prepared to accept it. 2020, you know, is a year of the Alpha and Omega having it all under control. Somebody knows that he's got it under control because if he didn't have it under control, you wouldn't be sitting up in here right now. If he didn't have it under control, you would have lost your mind in 2019. If he didn't have it under control, you wouldn't be able to do what you're doing in 2020. He's got it all under control. Can, can, can you imagine the private conversation the disciples had with Jesus? Listen, uh, in, especially in the Gospels, there are times in the Gospel where he lets you in on the private conversations that went on with him and his disciples. You know there was a public Jesus and there was also a private Jesus. Yes, sir. Deacons know this, right? Because you can't tell everything in public. Bless you. Some things you got to work out in private and then come out together in unison in the public and I know some of them I, I, I can imagine just what disciples it was and what what we why we got to do this what good can come out of this thing we, we've been here before we didn't have to go through all these gyrations it ain't even right and then now we got to add time and distance can't you hear the money changes saying we could use that money to give to the poor we could have used this time to worship more. Sometimes we got to break out of what's comfortable to do simply that which is right. Because what's 
comfortable isn't always what's right. I'm reminded of the scripture. This was first Sunday where we do Holy Communion. And he says specifically in the word, forgive. Ask for forgiveness and forgive someone else. And you know I am sensitive to that thing because I don't want him to forgive me like I forgive other people. Depending on what it is. Might take me a little while. I'm not talking about you all. I'm, I'm not. Might, I, might, I might have to meditate and fast. And, now, I might have to go to, to my secret closet a little bit. You know. you know, I might need to just pick up my gun and ha- to feel it, you know, and, and then put it back down again. We want the Lord to forgive us. Some of y'all are quiet right away. Safe to know that God's got you. Safe to know it's under control. It's safe to know that even in a strange place, he's still a familiar God. Mm Mm-hmm. What's the possibilities? What, what could possibly come out of me going in this strange and different direction? We've been there before. Why we got to take the long way around? Have, have you ever found yourself in that mind frame questioning the, the directives of the Almighty, questioning the direction of God, questioning as to why me and not someone else? You ever found yourself there? Well, if you, you've done that, you found yourself there, you're not by yourself, you know. A whole lot of folks have found themselves in that quagmire. First Kings 9 and 13, it was Elijah, powerful Elijah, found himself running from a little old woman. Well, she had a whole lot of power. Sometimes God will put us in those questionable circumstances. Preach, preacher. He'll do it so that we don't get the glory. He'll do it so he can get the glory out of our... Watch this, watch this, watch this. You, you might feel like you, you need to run every now and then. And, and I'm going to tell you, if you feel like you got to run every now and then, run. Run. But just remember God is with you. He's with you when you stand. And he's with you when you run. He's got everything under control. I'm almost through. Point two, we, 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 we all have to have our Samaritan experiences every now and then. We're not unique. The disciples weren't unique in this regard and nor was Jesus. He did it for our example. The text points out that Jesus prior to uh, his disciples even knowing this particular place where he was, was a holy place. It was strange, but holy nevertheless. Tap somebody, tell them, this is for you. This is the same place. Same place. This is the place between Mount Gazarim and and the Mount Ebal. Uh, on the other side. This is the place was mentioned in Genesis 12 and 6. It was where Jacob first met his estranged brother Esau. You remember that story about Jacob and Esau, don't you? Yeah, this place was also called Shisham, and then the scriptures in Shisham meant change or moment that produces change. Preach, preacher. It was at Shisham that Jacob uh, uh, buried his foreign gods and picked up the one and true living God. Isn't it amazing that both Islam, is, is Islam uh, Judaism, and Christianity all share the same God? It was here at Shisham. It's here at Shisham where Joseph, amen, was sold into slavery. This is the place right here at this place that they did not want to go to. This place that they really wanted to avoid. It was at Shisham. It was between the two mountains that Moses commanded that the Israelites once again pronounced that either they love God or that they're the the enemies of God. Either they're going to be obedient or they were going to be disobedient right at 
this place. It was Joshua's gathering of the tribes together right here. And Joseph's bones were buried right here. And yes, all of the Samaritans knew God and they met God right there in that place. And I come by to tell some place that's where the well was at that same place. That place was where the well was where both the Jews and the Samaritans went to draw their water at that place where cousins who didn't get along had to get along. Somebody needs to get this, that God is taking you where he needs you to be because he's already been there. He's still going to be there. And when you leave there, he's going to still be there. And he wouldn't take you to the place if he didn't want to do something special with you at the place. Thank you, Jesus. And just because you don't feel comfortable in the place doesn't mean God is not there with you in that place. And sometimes in order to become comfortable, you've got to become uncomfortable. If you ever broke a bone before, you know they got to set that bone. And after they set it, they got to put a cast on it. And you know the most uncomfortable part about the cast is when the healing really starts to take place. That's where the itching and the scratching goes on at the point when you know you've really been healed. That's, that's where you're no longer comfortable having that crutch, that cast on. Because now the healing is there. You know if you ever have a scar and you know when it covers up with that blood, you know the most uncomfortable time is once it's healed. Because now it's just a feeling where you just need to take that scab off so that the air can get to it and I wish I had one or two people in here to understand that when God will take you to a place where you're most uncomfortable sometimes what God is doing is healing you right in the process of your state of uncomfortability because God knows what's best for us he knows what we need better than we know this place was the central gathering place of the entire nation. It is where we need to be. And I'm not an advocate of war. I'm not an advocate of violence. But sometimes violence is in order. Because the Bible says that the kingdom is taken by force. And there are times in which God needs to shake us in a fashion to wake us to move. I often say the sleeping is giant in the world is the church. And sometimes God needs to wake us up. And lastly, he can do a new thing in an old place. The scripture tells us that Jesus had been there before and this woman had been there before. Can I talk about it just for a second? Yes. This, this woman had gone to the well, yes. but she went to the well in different, on a different schedule than her peers. Yes. 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 Text says that this woman had gathered a reputation and it wasn't the best. Yes. Yes. You ever heard folks say, I don't go to that church because of them folks? Uh -huh. yes. you, you, this woman had a reputation of stealing other women's men. Oh, y'all don't want me to preach no more. Let me, let me close this up now and, and open the doors and, and let us go because it's too heavy for some church folk, you know. This, 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 this woman was a woman of the day in the night. <laughs> oh, no, none of y'all. <laughs> none of y'all know anything about that. This woman was a member of a local church. And Jesus said to the woman, when he met her at the well, he says, where is your husband? And she said, I don't have none, one of them. And Jesus, knowing her and knowing us, you know what Jesus does, don't you? Don't he speak right to your situation? Won't he call your number? Won't he pull your card? He said, you right, you ain't got no husband and all the rest of them you had wasn't yours either. You know what he does, don't you? He does it so he can get your attention. So he can get your undivided attention. This was the same place, I tell you, of blessings. This is the same place of healing. But sometimes you got to dig into the soil in order to heal the situation. She had been there before. 
And the Bible says that she went in inopportune times. She went when other women weren't there, so she didn't have to deal with the uncomfortable reality of the gossip of the other women. I want to tell two or three church folk in here that just because you can point to somebody else's failures don't mean that you don't have your own. Oh, we're going into 2020 now. We're going into 2020 now. I, I want to tell just three or four folk that you know you, you are quick at your judgment button. Hold off. Wait a minute. Don't push that judgment button too fast, baby. Because if you push that buzz button, it may be your own nuclear bomb. She was at that well. But hallelujah, this time somebody else met her there. She was at the same well, but this time healing was at the well. She was at a place where she had been before, but somebody in here know he can do a new thing in an old place. Thank you, Jesus. She didn't just get a tongue lashing, she also got a healing. She had been there before and she got her thirst quenched naturally. But at this juncture, she came to get a spiritual quenching. I come by to tell somebody, don't keep coming to church in 2020 and just leaving the same way. Come with some expectations. Come expecting God to meet you at that place. Come with telling God, I'm not going to leave until you bless me. Come be not because of who's singing in the choir or who's preaching in the pulpit, but come because God says, I'll meet you at your place of need come believing God will move on your behalf and I dare you to trust him enough because you'll leave receiving what God has for you I come with a mindset this morning that in 2020 I'm going to get what God has for me in 2020 I'm going to rebu rebuke every imp out of my situation in 2020 I'm going to tell the Lord yes and I'm going to tell the devil, no. In 2020, I'm going to give him thanks over everything I got. When I get up early in the morning, I'm going to look to the hills and what's come of my help and say thank you for another day's journey. In the middle of the day, while I'm in the middle of a meeting, I'm going to look at whoever I'm meeting with and I'm going to hear them go womp, womp, womp. But inside, I'm going to say thank you for another day's journey. And when I lay down, I'm going to tell the Lord, it's been a long day. It's been an arduous journey. But thank you for meeting me all day long. I've been saved all day long. I've been helped, healed, revived in the living all day long and for that for that i'm gonna give you some praise think about this thing you've been there before but go back with some new expectations go back with some new demands go back with a new perspective i'm here again but I'm not the same. I'm here again, but I'm not gonna leave the same way. I'm here again, but the difference is I recognize that I'm not here alone. If God be for you, if God be for you, if God be for you, he's more than the world against you. Now, what shall we say? Do these things if God be for me who can stand against me now unto him who is able he's able to present you faultless blameless exceedingly above all that you can think of hope to him be power power glory honor now i 
don't care what's going on. Now. You ain't got to wait. Now. In forever. Hallelujah. In the church said. Amen. The angel said. Amen. The spirit says. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It is so. A new thing in an old place. He's always doing something new. You don't have to expect and anticipate some of these new flashy. God can do it right where you are. And in case there's some folk in here thinking you're not good enough or wise enough or smart enough, let me tell you something. You are enough. God loves you right now. You are more than enough. If we didn't need a savior, we wouldn't be sinners. But hallelujah, God is in the saving business. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you for your saving power save our souls if we should lie down the night and die we want to be with you in heaven and we should live to 102 when our day comes we want to be with you we accept you as our Lord we accept you as our Savior